real right now. Mr. DL. Two, two, two. Two, two, two. Who's all? Yeah, yeah, we are here. The Danger Zone podcast number 12. No. <laughs> 13, number bro. 13. I Lucky forgot. 13, man. You number 12 was crazy. We yeah. had Billy Dan's yeah, here for an hour. Of course. Hour. I know we, uh, if some of y'all might have peeped that we were supposed to have Dana Barrows on, but uh, the Celtics are in the thick of things, man, um, with the playoffs and stuff. And uh, he's a shooting consultant with the team, so um, he had to reschedule. But he will be here in a couple of weeks. But, you know, you're going to have me and DL. You're going to oh, talk yeah. about shit. Might be better. Put you on, you know, we still gonna like have a good time, man. This moment, man. This hour here, man. <clears throat> What's good, man? What's happening with you, man? How are you, D? I'm good, man. I just want to make sure everybody hits that like button, leave a comment. That really helps us out. Most depth. You gotta hit the like button. We're growing too. That's we, your part of the. You, yeah. you're, we got our part. You got your part. Your yeah. part is just hit that like button and hang out with us for an hour every yeah. week. We growing, man. So we appreciate those who are tuning in. Somebody just recent. Uh, <clears throat> said that they were going to binge watch while they probably was eating sweet potato pie or some shit. I don't know, but I mean, <laughs> that shit is dope. You know, smoke, drink, binge watch, chill. Yeah. You don't do any any uh, extracurricular um, activities as far as smoking, drinking, or whatever like that. Just <laughs> just check it out, man. You know, we're going to be here. The Danger Zone Podcast, episode 13. That's what it is. Yes, number 13. So, lucky 13, we're going to start with the baby once again. <laughs> Shooting motherfuckers. <laughs> mm. Yeah, like, I just love shooting people. I mean, he like the clock. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sometimes you got to, hey, I had a song called Protection. Sometimes, man, that's really how you got to protect yourself, man, because they coming to get yours. You know what I'm saying? That's that's really what it is. But what actually happened, man? What, what, what was up? So, um, the baby calls 911 from uh, his home, and in the background, you just hear a guy going, <laughs> he's in, in pain. Wow. And the baby tells the dispatcher, hey, um, I, he gives his real name and his address. Mm. We're not going to do that here. Yeah. But uh, he says, hey, this guy was intruding in my house. I don't know if he was here to shoot someone or steal something, mm. but I shot the motherfucker. Yeah. And don't worry, officer. He'll be here when you get here. Not going nowhere. He, he'll be right here. So <clears throat> as you guys know, um, the baby has... This isn't a first time occurrence for the baby. Mm. He killed a man in Walmart a few years back who rolled up on him and tried to rob him. Mm. And he shot him right there and right there holding his kid. He's holding, the baby was holding his kid mm. and mm. shot this guy. Mm. And uh, you know, he, he beat that. And it looks like he's gonna beat this. Because we live in Massachusetts where gun laws in Massachusetts are super strict. Here's my opinion why. Because John F. Kenny was from here and he got killed on live fucking television. And he and he was like the hero of Massachusetts, and mm. I think since that day, they were they just didn't like guns anymore here. I mean, we're always strict anyway. <laughs> Massachusetts, <clears throat> we're always the, excuse me, we're always the last. You know, we're the last for everything. <laughs> you know, surprise. Even when they got to you know legal legalizing some marijuana, um, all these different laws, even the license, the way license when license came out that hard uh, version. Oh yeah, Us, yeah, we were last. Like everywhere oh, you went, Cali, wherever, they all had those. <laughs> but uh, what it was like paper license back in the day? No, it was thin, laminated. laminated. It was laminated, but it was both sides. Like oh, I see. Kind of yeah. flimsy. Yeah, yeah. And, and, but everywhere else I would go, like Florida, Cali, you know, they all had the other license already. We got it way after. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we're always we're always last, man. You know what it is? What it is <laughs> you know, last but first in some instances. You know. So I just think that's kind of super crazy. Um, let me tell you something. If the baby was from the '90s, people right. people would say he was the most gangster thing that ever walked the face of the earth. <laughs> yeah, well. But because he's from when he's from, he got really no respect in, from people of my age generation, mm -hmm. which I don't think is cool. I like the baby. He's mm -hmm. not Nas, but everyone's not Nas. Right. You know what I'm saying? Everyone doesn't have to be Nas. He makes fun music. If you bring something mm -hmm. to the table, and you know. Rapping anyway and being an artist and being in this game is basically the NFL. The meaning, what I mean is NFL is not for long. Mm. So your time in the light is very, is not really that long. While you're there, go ahead. You got some people that, that you know, Tom Brady the game. Yeah, yeah. Like if someone like Drake was pretty consistent for a long time. But everybody gets to that point, to the height. Yeah. Then either you drop all the way off or you just, you, you stay in the middle, you stay, you know, 
with your listeners and your, your followers yeah, and what yeah. have you. So while you have that light, go ahead, man, and get all you can. You know what I'm saying? Because he's had a, he's had a rough year. He got canceled. Mm. He got canceled a couple years, uh, a couple months back, a few months back at this point. Right. Lost all those gigs. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, he seems he seems to be back. It was like something about the, he made a anti-gay comment or something, and he got right. canceled for that. But oh yeah, he's back shooting people. So I guess <laughs> Not that, well, you know, <laughs> you, you you can shoot somebody, you gonna they gonna bring it up. But if you speak about other stuff, sexuality and all that. You know what's happening. Yeah, it's all funny. Race, all racism, you're getting stamped on the forehead up out of here. Here's a, here's a good point Big Shook just made. It's mm-hmm. like, you could shoot uh, a, a young man, I guess in this case, a young black man, and kill him in Walmart. No one cares. They don't try to cancel you. Yeah. But if you, if you say something about, oh, I don't I don't like this or I don't like that, oh, come for your whole career. You have sexual preferences or whatever. It's kind of crazy if you think about that. Yeah, man. Such is such life, though, now, man. You know, it's the world we live in, you know? Um, but here, I'm going to play this uh, audio real quick so you guys can hear yeah, this 911 that, call. Yeah, here we go. That. Boom. And what's going on there? Uh, uh, got you on my property. Here you go. Yeah. Sir, what did you do? Uh, I shot him in his leg. Okay. Uh, and why did you do he's that? Trespassing on, he's trespassing on my property. He's calling me by my name. I don't know what he's here for, what he's here to take, what he's here to do. But he's okay, out, he's with ready. Him he's neutralized. Now? He's neutralized until you guys get here. Sir, are you with him now? He's right here in front of me. Sir, is there any serious bleeding? I gotta say yes, bro. Okay. Is he completely alert? Is he what? Is he completely alert? Do you hear him? Do you not hear this man, bro? Sir, I'm asking you, is he completely alert? Yeah, I can't hear you repeating every question that you ask me because he's over here screaming. Okay, where's your firearm, sir? Right here in my hand. I'm gonna need you to secure your firearm, sir. Sir. It's secure. Um, um, sir. It's secure. I told you it's secure. I'm not putting it down with this with this trespass right here on my property. I'm not doing it. I, okay, I understand that. I understand that, sir. But I know I'm talking about. I mean, that. I have to let the police in the gate anyway. But I don't know who he got with him, what he came up for. But he's already an uh, acre on my property. All right, so that was the baby. Um, you got anything in hip hop? I have a few things, yeah, but I'm sure you got some things sure you want to talk about. Man, like you know, um, um, Daz, you know, he, he spoke up on um, Snoop Dogg giving the wrong information about um, the Tupac All All Eyes on Me joint. Uh, he said Nas was on there. This is what Snoop had said on Drink Champs. This is what um, was, you know, alleged to him say. This was Daz has said, you know. And um, Daz says that's not correct, you know, and he feels that, um, you know, have your have your information right when you're telling the story. But as I know from being on the other side of, um, of the game and, and hip hop and celebrities, uh, somewhat, whatever, a lot of these years go by and a lot of smoke and a lot of drinking, a lot of different shit be happening. And some of the some of the stories get a little kind of, you know, fuzzy to people. Uh, I got a pretty clear, accurate mind, so like uh, those around me know that I'm pretty I'm pretty good with just, you know, the memory. Yeah. You know, but sometimes stuff gets shifted a little bit. So, you know, uh, I guess he just spoke on that and um, as time goes on we'll we'll see if if, if, if uh, Snoop has anything else to say about it, you know, we'll go from there. But uh so yeah, apparently, that's that's at, yeah. apparently Tupac wanted Nas cut off the record. Mm-hmm. That's what that was it. Yeah. Took his and he he supposedly got in his place, you know, and, okay. and whatever. But you know, like Daz, Daz produced it, and he's basically saying that that wasn't the case. So. And Nas was already big. Yeah, yeah, no question. Okay, because Tupac make, died like two years after Nas came out. Yeah, they wasn't making them big. Like everybody like knew who Nas was. You know yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah. Like that's that, crazy though that they wouldn't just yeah. keep him on the record <clears throat> because back then, like you know. Long, you know, songs went up to five minutes long. Some songs. Oh shit! <laughs> even, you know? be, even before that era, songs was even at like twenty yeah. minutes. Oh yeah, because like that's the, how they mix. The Funkadelic and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you already know <laughs> Funkadelic and shit. Check out BL. Them shits be a half hour. Me, you be dancing, take your shirt off, eating and shit. They still playing that shit. That's what it was. That I used was to wonder era. when I was a kid, like you'd get a Marvin Gaye. Your mom, your mom or dad would have a Marvin Gaye record. It would be one disc. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then you get a Funkadelic record, it'll be like eight discs. That's and it's one album. Listen, like, what man, the fuck's this going Chocolate on? City. <laughs> you know what it is, man. You know. Um, also, man, I want to give a, a shout and, and a heartfelt words of my man Guru, 
who um, I believe it was on the 19th. It was um, 12 years of his passing. And, uh, you know, people know the legacy. Um, you know, that was my brother. We started Gangstar together. Um, for those who don't know, who might just be tuning in, um, from the name, from, you know, rapping, from us uh, doing like some pinky swear <laughs> shit where if one of us got in trouble or something happened, we broke up, the other one made it, he would come back and get the other one. So that's kind of almost what happened with us, you know, because, you know, I went the other way and he, he rose up. But, um, so you didn't have to, um, you didn't have to come for that. He he gave he he gave you that. Yeah, I mean I didn't. You, you know, didn't have to like show up for that and be nah, like, hey, what's up? You know, cause like when when, when I was released, my my um, mindset was <clears throat> to get my to be able to you know contribute to society to like you know as as a human being really just get my shit right me personally. So I wasn't looking for careers and all that and the music. I was just wanting to be right myself without yeah. addiction and such like that. But then so we we you know. Backstory, uh, fast forward, we kind of connected, reconnected, and then we grew. But I missed him, man, because he was you like they were, like we were we were best friends. We want some like true best friend shit. And last ten years of his life, he was caught up in a situation where I, uh, I was unfortunate that I couldn't see him. I didn't see him. I, you know, it was it was uh, possible he was on the move with this other guy, whatever was happening. Um, some know that, some don't. Yeah. But we're not going to uh, let the negativity shine on that. The moment is that we lost him 12 years ago. And uh, so you miss lost, you, Guru. You, lo you lost a music partner right. and a friend at that time, so you didn't yeah. even talk to him at all. Nah, you not weren't even talking to him about, hey, how you doing? Nah, he left a couple of messages. Other than that, man, Guru, you know, we miss you. Um, your son is doing great. You know, his family's great, you know. Legacy's great. The legacy continues, man. Me and Prem still gonna be popping it, man. There's so much more shit and others too, man. So shout out to Guru, man. We lost him 12 years ago. Go on um, the 19th, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Rest in peace, man. Yeah. Never knew him, but I mean, I, yeah. I knew who he was, never met him. Believe it or not. I don't, I don't know how that happened, but I never met him, man. Rest in, I mean, you know, sometimes things happen. Sometimes shits be ship, ships in the night type shit, you know? What else you got, man? You got something else on that? Oh, yeah. Front? Front. I know you do. Because you're kind of fanny. I am a fan. Yeah, that's cool, I'm, man. Me uh, too, man. Big Shook says I'm a shaft surfer. Yeah, well. <laughs> but then I diss certain people, and it tells me, you know, it tells me, hey, oh, hold on. <laughs> nah, I mean, well, you know what it is. is You know what it is, man? It's kind of like a, a, a rock in a hard place type of thing. Or because with you us don't, together, you don't have to. You don't want to have to live up to my opinion. Uh, no, no, it's not that, but it's like, so, like you just said, it's being a fan, you know, to the, just from that side of it. And then me, the celebrity of it, meaning that, you know, me living and, and, and personally knowing some people that you might not like. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I had, some, I had great moments. Like, you're not a fan of uh, uh, Karis One. I don't not like him. Like him. I don't know him. Yeah, yeah. But, but I, I know him. Yeah, but I'm saying I had a great moment because uh, when I was freestyling, when I when I first met him and we was all in the cipher, and then I'm like, I Biz just, was beatboxing. No, no, that was another time. Oh, okay. That's what I'm saying. I had so many great moments yeah, yeah, yeah. with dudes I just read about or studied about before I went to jail or whatever. So now, you know, because uh, quick story, my my brother, who people tend to think he's straight up and down. Shout out to my brother Vince. So they 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 don't never like think that we're brothers, but yeah. you know he's more like straight, you know, laced and you know that type of thing. That's my dude, love him. Uh, but he was the one who brought home uh, uh, that that Karis One Criminal Minded joint. Mm. When he brought that home, I was like, yo, you know what I'm saying? I listened to that. He also brought home the Rock Him, like the first act. The first time I heard them was through my brother. I don't know shit. You know what I mean? Who ain't no rapper or nothing, like, but this was like before I even was like, obviously, you know, on, I could always do a little bit of rhyming, you know, but. Uh, I was like, oh shit. So I was introduced to dudes. And, you know, we all, at uh, my time we, era, we was uh, listening to um, uh, White Lines and all that shit by Grandmaster yeah, Flash yeah. and all them. So then I take the journey. I take the journey and I freestyle with Karis One yeah. at the fucking DD. &D. Shout out to DD, &D, Doug and Dave, man, my dudes. I beatbox, I rhyme and freestyle with 
Biz beatboxing. I went to a party where Biz was DJing. Craig G was there. Kane was there. Uh, this is all my 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 artistry, so to speak. I'm um, freestyling to the Dwight beat mm, when nice. Cream was making it with Lord Finesse. <clears throat> you know what I mean? So it's so much. And then I go on the radio station, Hot 97, and um, I'm freestyling the way I know the freestyle, but. The whole Grandmaster Flash and Furious Five are up there freestyling, so they had their routines, da, 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 da. all of them, like harmonizing yeah. and all that, and I'm spitting like my way, and I'm like, wow, you know, so so it's so much more stories and shit, but I'm just saying all of those <laughs> things that I've like, like people I've read about or whatever, I was doing shit with. And yeah. uh, even on the, we can go to the soul side, where I, I sang at a um, Impact, um, and uh, we were performing uh, Jazz with Taz with New, and it was in uh, uh, Jersey. Um, yeah, that was Jersey. That was Atlantic City. And um, everybody was there, Prince, all the music people, OJs, oh, wow. everybody. And Stevie Wonder just said, you sound terrific. You know what I mean? They said, you know, he had his people with him, and he came up. And, so right. I'm saying there's so much shit I touched. I touched on like that, man, with the people. So I know that side. Hung out with motherfuckers, smoked weed with Barry White, all kinds of shit, right? You know what I mean? And and so I know it from that side. Was, so sometimes with some fan shit, somebody say, like they don't really like they're just speaking like as a fan. And see that that's what balances it out with me and you. Yeah, yeah. Because you you come from that perspective, became a music maker and doing the videos and all that. But at first, it's the fandom of it. Yeah, yeah. And me, I was a fan too. But then I jumped into the game. Yeah, you were there. You so were, so were, I actually yeah, led yeah, in, yeah. like someone, they like when people talk about Tupac and Biggie and all them, like like I said, I literally hung out with cats. I literally was in some situations where people read as folklore, you know, where I was right there, like, oh shit, okay. Who's that, <laughs> over, who's that over there? Oh shit, it's Tupac getting his dick sucked at the club. You know, and that, now this shit is like, I'm like, I'm looking at it like, damn, this is a crazy ass boy. Right, and then next thing you know, it's all over the news and all types of shit. Like, so I mean, craziness, man. But anyway, man, I ran off on that a little bit. But no, go ahead. Good. What, what else you got? Yeah, we got. Um, before we get into the obvious uh, sadness oh. of the week, oh yeah, yeah I want to, you know, yeah, I, yeah, I want to yeah. talk about a couple more funny things. Yeah, um, go ahead, man. Laugh for Fifty Cent has been dragging Jay Z for like the last week because it was revealed on Drink Champs when Snoop Dogg was on there that. Um, <clears throat> Eminem said he wouldn't do the show, the halftime show, mm -hmm. if 50 Cent wasn't involved. Mm -hmm. and, and I think what really set them off was that when 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 Noriega asked Jay Z about it, Jay Z referred to Eminem as the white boy, not not Eminem. White boy, white man, or what do you say? Yeah, the white boy, oh. the white guy, oh, white, white guy. guy. Okay. It was the white guy. Mm -hmm. So I think that was the the whole thing. I think 50 Cent was just looking for something to, to stir a pot, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. kind of his whole thing. Yeah, he's a pot stirrer. You know? um, Go, go. He's hanging upside down, boy. I was well, like, no. I, I think, yeah. you know, if we're going to get into who should, who should be there, who shouldn't be there, mm -hmm. Ice Cube wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna, if anyone's going to complain that they weren't there, they should sit back and be like, well, wait a second. Ice Cube wasn't there. So well, maybe, maybe, maybe I should say, hey, maybe Dr. Dre had his own vision for this. <laughs> well, you got <laughs> you to you think of one thing, too. Ice Cube wasn't there. But uh, as it became more Dr. Dre, not N.W.A. Everybody that was there was kind of in his mix. Yeah, yeah. He, you know, the artist he brought out. Yeah, like Mary J. You know, was, yeah. was Mary J. Yeah, but he but did, she mean, did come the rest, over there for a little while. Yeah, the rest of that shit was like from the Dre side of it. Yeah. Like if we talk N.W.A., then you know what I'm saying. You know, he could have been in the middle of Super Bowl. Fuck the police. Who coming you straight get? out of comp. Yeah. There's, right. there's yes. three. There's three people to. There's three choices. Who who do, who who takes the N.W.A. credit? Is it Easy E? Is it Dr. Dre or is it Ice Cube? I know that there was all collectively a thing. Takes correct. Take, take credit for the main the main star, the main. Well, piece. who was the main star? Was it Easy E? I know Ice no, Cube no. was a talent, but Easy no. I feel like Easy E was the star. I I believe it started out as Easy E being the star. Yeah. And then, uh, as time went on, like it became kind of Dre. Dre, really, and and Ice Cube because you think Dre was a star in NWA. I'm not the beginning, no, no. Because in in in, 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 in NWA, even with 100 miles of running after Ice Cube left, you think you think it was Dr. Dre was a star? Yeah, he, he, yeah, yeah. I would say you know why? Because once we start learning about it, 
you know, back in the day, it was more like that time. It was more important, like knowing who did beats, yeah, like who did the music. You'd be like, oh shit, like oh, that's really? Dre doing that. That's Dre oh, doing that. So then you're like, you know what I mean? Oh shit, so Dre man, he's making joints. Yeah, you know what I mean. And then that's why when Ice Cube first went over, you know, to New York and yeah. on that side, right? Uh, they were like thinking he wasn't gonna be dope no yeah. more because they're thinking of the Dre beats yeah. and all that, right? And, the, and you know, and so. He just went for the complete opposite sound. Right, right. You know I mean? he, was still, he was still Ice Cube. Then when we find out that he basically was the writer, you know what I'm saying? It was like, damn, so... Hit. Because what was the single, uh, besides 100 Miles and Running, the track, the, the track, uh, the be, title track? You always be giving me what, these bullshit-ass lights. What, uh, what was the single off, shit, shit. off 100 Miles and Running? Like, what did they have after Ice Cube left? I mean, I can't really tell you that. Like, right I can't. Off, I can't either. Yeah, I can't really. And I was a huge NWA, Easy E fan. No and question. I don't know. Look at, I got two paintings of the motherfucker. No, I believe you. You know, you, so you sent me that Ghost Rider and all. You sent me that uh, that clip of you and your friends when you was in school, <laughs> and I can see that shit happening. You know what I'm saying? Everybody get dressed up, put your bandanas and your motherfucking, you know, and just play NWA all loud. You know what I'm saying? I tell you what, the first time I heard that shit, uh, Mo D. Now, I believe I had two joints first from him. One was um, he was he was either blasting or someone was blasting it when Easy and it was out back in the day, and uh, and he said, "I'm the kind of nigga who's built to last. Fuck around with me, I put a foot in your ass." Yeah. And that's when that type of shit wasn't even on records. Like so, when I first heard that, I said, "Yo, what is this? Like on some shit? Like I'm young, whatever." Yeah. One, so yeah, you know yeah. some. Some not not that people getting shot is funny, but we had some funny topics to talk about this week because we tried to start this light because right, you know, uh, DJ K Slay died. K Slay, man, street sweeper, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I you mean, think there'll ever be another K Slay, a guy who puts on people who DJ who puts on people he actually likes, I and mean, not just though yo your popping there, y'all put him on mixtape. One thing that was dope, yeah. One thing that was dope about K <laughs> K Slay, and that's 100. Um, percent because he would play a few joints, like, and I wouldn't even know, you know, that he he, he was on his mixtape till I caught him afterwards. And yeah. I'd be like, oh shit. And it wasn't about a personal relationship, about, yo, play that for me, man, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Like, shout out to um, my man Singapore. And he had a song, um, Take It Personal. Okay. I mean, Don't Take It Personal, you know what I mean? Um, I won't. And um, I know, right? And, um, <laughs> and K Slay had that shit on the mix. I was like, oh shit. You know, because, you know, Singapore wasn't a. Um, Main artist and, yeah, yeah. and just coming out basically, and, and I mean, he put up. That's because he it, it was thrown to him, like you know, and he you know what I'm saying. So and it featured me. Don't uh, don't take it personal featuring Big Sugar. Like check it out if you ain't you know go listen. But man, but Kate's, a DJ Kate, on that level, like he he put out people he like. Like for example, he kept doing those hundred rapper songs, right? Right. Like there'd be a hundred rappers on this song, fifty on this, a hundred fifty, right. whatever. And it's like some of the rappers, he'd be like, Ice T comes on, then Black Dot comes on, then like Busta Rhymes comes on, and then some guy you never heard of comes on. Right. And you gotta kind of respect that because he's like, well, I, that's the guy I like. I like that rapper, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something for his career. I'm gonna put him on this record, even if he got a little little bag for it. Right. E right. E either way, like he I didn't mean, have to do it. I mean, and, there's plenty and, of rappers of, of stature who would pay to be on that record right. because I mean, you know they know it's gonna go viral. He's pure, man. He was pure, man. His legacy will continue. Street Sweeper, K Slay, DJ K Slay, man. You know, always loved, man. Always in our memories, hearts, minds. Such an iconic uh, figure for the time, too, man. And, and this music. And one thing about bringing music to the people and shit like that, it's going to always, um, the legacy will, it's always going to resonate. There's always going to be, it's like, People to tell the stories, people to hear the music, people that you know what I mean. Did so, you know him? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I never but met not, him. not like buddy, buddy type, yeah, yeah. like you know. But but of course, I mean, I've been around New York and, and the music so much. We, we're gonna run into each other, man. Like, like yeah, yeah. Uh, shout out to Cool Herb too. He recently had a birthday too. Oh, um, the, the father of hip hop. Yeah. But um, rest in peace, K. Slate. We'll take no light off of that, man. And you know, the legacy continues, and we're gonna continue, man. Um, doing I this who's music, gonna take. Man. Take uh take up for him and, and do that kind of stuff like I mean put rapper like put put out rappers that you know might just be popping in a certain neighborhood in Brooklyn they might just be super hop popping there I mean people and, are gonna and do he'll it. find it and he'll he would have put them out put I them mean, on the radio maybe had them come up to the radio you know what I mean yeah, I mean 
there, there's always, you know, there's going to be someone to pass it, you know, but there's not going to be K. Slate. And hopefully they, they just, whatever they learn from him as well, <clears throat> just do it as good and, or a little better just because you, what you learn from K. Slate. So. Shout out to Terminology. They, um, he he done a bunch of stuff with K. Slay, and I was yeah. watching the Breakfast Club the other day, and right. Angela Lee, Angela Yee was on there, uh, who's using a photo of herself from like forty pounds ago. Mm. But it's all good. She's still, she's still cute. Whoa! <laughs> but yeah, anyway, yeah. Uh, ahead, Danger yeah. Zone, Danger Zone. <laughs> Danger Zone, um, baby. Uh, she shouted to him out and, and read his uh, tweet about K. Slay, so I thought that was kind of crazy because I listened to that show all, all the time. Yeah, I fucks with it a little bit too, man. So. Uh, also, uh, <laughs> Georgia State to, to grant Ludacris Bridges an honorary degree. To me, shit like that is always dope because, I mean, I, I believe he went there. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. Yeah, he was and, like a radio DJ. Yes, he was, and he's legendary as a DJ, but he's also legendary as a, um, as a, 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 a radio personality and a rapper, obviously. So, you know what I mean? He went on to do some great things, man. And, you know, and, and he was one of my, he's still one of my favorite rappers, man. Just because he had a different style and he I, presented it like that. You know what I mean? I always compared him, and they don't have the same style or anything, but I always compared him to Redman in a way that he was like the new Redman at Def Jam. He was kind of like yeah. animated, animated, and funny. Great. Yeah. Like, he was I comical, like, tuned yeah. head. And then, um, and even some songs were so affected, like like move, bitch. Yeah, you had everybody saying that. Suburban white people, hood people, everybody. Move, bitch. Right? Because you just you understood because those type of songs are the ones that be like people. Yeah, that's pop think culture. Them. Yeah, the people think them. They might not do it, but that's what they're thinking. You know what I mean? So, yo, know, shout out to Little Chris on that, man. That's that's dope. You know, um, <laughs> I got one here that's coming in as we speak. Trend, right? That's trending right now as we speak. What's that? Um, WAC 100 mm. is currently under fire for claiming he is in possession of a gay Nipsey Hussle sex tape. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's pretty hard body, man. That's hard body right this there. This is trending right now, mm. and it's and it's on a uh, uh, re very reputable hip-hop website that I'm not shouting out. Yeah, man, well... <clears throat> Something like that, man. You know, you just got to let it play itself out, man. <laughs> play yourself out. You know. Black 100 kind of annoying. Yeah, I don't I don't really fuck with that because hearsay is hearsay and, and whatever. And people speak because you're listening. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I said, if nobody's talking, nobody's talking. So someone's saying something for the shock value or the truth of it or whatever. There are people, we live in that era, man. You know what I'm saying? So I don't really take too much about it. You know, do you, man, get your money, man. You know what I'm saying? Whack 100 and anybody else. Like, go ahead and, 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 and capitalize, man. Do your thing. So, whatever comes out, comes out. Like, we see people are still waiting to see um, a Will Smith, uh, Chris Rock tape of the hand actually on the face. The hand face. We're yep. still waiting. Send yeah. that into the... Just show that shit, man. Send that into us when you hit like and subscribe. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, subscribe. Master we need, P, we Ma need you to like hit that like button. Go ahead, man. Little Master man. P says that all this Nipsey Hustle love is fake because um, you guys weren't here when he was live, and now it's too late. Right. What do you think about that? I think Nipsey Hustle. I, I don't know. I, I kind of agree sometimes because it's like when a rapper dies, they kind of get bumped up on the how great they were list. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? But that's the same. That's the same way if people aren't rappers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like my fucker could have ran around. Um, yeah, like Heath Ledger did one great movie, and everyone's like, "Oh my God, we lost the Shakespeare of our time." Right. I mean, <laughs> you know what I'm that's how, that's the perception of people. So you know what I mean? Like somebody could have been did something one thing great, but on the other times he was running around burning up mice. Yeah, you know I mean, I mean, <laughs> and they're gonna celebrate. Making a fur coat. So, I mean, shit. <laughs> Making know, a mouse That's, that's the way of the world we live in. So also, um, I want to give a shout out. <laughs> Trina and Lotto deliver a strip club anthem from South with um clap. Oh shit. Listen to that shit. Trina and Lotto deliver a strip club anthem. Clap. So we already know, you know what I'm saying, Trina, man. Shout out still doing your thing, man, all these years later. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause if you can Liberty even, City. If you can even do a strip club 
joint years later. You know what I'm saying? Because the the, met, uh, the metamorphosis people go through. She still has a famous ass. That's yeah. why she can still do. Well, you know, but, but, her ass is still famous, so she can still make that kind I mean, of music. But it's thing. cool because some people you can't. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't. You know what I mean? Women especially like they. You're making that joint. So so shout out to Trina, man, and Lotto. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead, bump that clap. You know what I'm saying? You know what it is. Yeah, shout out to Trina. Yeah, she, she's awesome. She always showed me love. She was my first celebrity client. Mm -hmm. uh, I when I got out of college, I was like, I'm gonna go make it. See me, I'm going to make it. Where do I want to live? I was like, New York City. Nah, there's too much going on there. I'm gonna go to New Miami mm -hmm. because it was on the it was on the rise. Right. So you know, I tried to make it. My first interview in the in the business was with KG from Naughty by Nature. <clears throat> he didn't want me. Uh, second interview was with uh, Slip and Slide, and I ended up being an engineer at Slip and Slide. Mm. And uh, I worked with three artists that I remember. So you're saying this was when you was on Slip and Slide? I wasn't on Slip and Slide. Oh, I, was, I was just an engineer intern. there. Oh, were you engineer? Oh, yeah, I was an engineer. Yeah, I was oh, out okay. of college. Yeah, I, so, but I got so the did... shit hours. I got, I got Saturday night hours. Right. right. And, and no, everyone does. All the famous people go to the club. Right. So I, I, yeah. I, got, I, I got mostly nobodies. Right, you know what I'm saying? But, but did, did turned they, into somebody's. Did you? I know. Did you actually? Um, did you actually play slip and slide there? Nah, I wish. Do you know what slip and slide is? The, like the thing you slide on. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Used to make that shit is funny as hell because that that game is probably still prevalent right the fuck now. <laughs> Wet ass little shit, you slide on yeah, that yeah. motherfucker, and then you lay it out at a, at a cookout somewhere. And a, a yard, you might get a few adults trying to do that shit too, man. For sure. so, I, hey, I'd be there. I'd be that guy. Yeah, I know you. I know, man. You, you get on your little bam bam shit. Oh, my shirt off. Like, yo, take my shirt off. Nah, I'm not taking my shirt off. Help me, honey. Help me. Take my <laughs> shit off. I'm finished. I'm finna go. They, they go DL. So, uh, you know? so yeah, I, I lived down there, and it was it was interesting. It was cool. Like, um. I kind of submerged myself right into the major market, and, mm. and it just wasn't that wasn't the place for me and my sound. Right. It, I, I just was like, I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna I'm be gonna on Sony. I'm gonna be yeah. on Universal. Of course. So instead of starting at like uh, Fat Beats mm. or something like that, I went to the top of the thing, mm. thinking that oh, I'm, well, you know, and no, no, it just wasn't. They were I like, no, no, nah, nah, you can't do it. You can't if, work here. if you look at the crazy shit, you I mean, drop that bag of weed, bro. You can't work here. I, well, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, when people, uh, I mean, when, when you set out to do something, you know, you're on an island anyway because no one else is like believing in your shit or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And you're going to seek something. Me and Guru years ago went to Atlanta, Georgia. You know what I'm saying? Because we wanted to meet Larry Blackman from, okay. you know, from Cameo. Because we felt like, because we was like, a, like I said, a singing, rapping type of thing early, like around that time. Yeah. And then, you know, we had some chain of, of events house calling on fire oh. you know what I'm saying uh, down there yeah crashed his uh, we crashed his ex roommates college roommates crib you know and we took that shit over for like two three months and his, <laughs> and his roommate left cause we, you know we hit him with the can we stay here we need to stay here for a few days our crib burn mm. but then you know Dude probably knew that I'm gonna sun the shit out of these motherfuckers. Whatever. We, so we was living there. Yeah. Dude's living on the couch. Crazy shit, man. So it's, you know, <laughs> I've just brought that up, man. Cause sometimes, man, I mean, you go out, you set out to, to do something, and we thought we were gonna meet him, which we never met him. You know what I mean? But eventually, you know, shit popped, and, and me and Google, you know the story. But K I know, KG gave me good advice, though. What he do? He he, he was. Like, yeah, I didn't listen to him. No. I didn't I didn't take his advice because yeah. I was so. I was laser focused on. I'm gonna be an executive in the music. Business. You knew it'd be kind of whack to be like a white dude with cornrows. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's fun. Oh god, I'm Go ahead, man, that's I got a Photoshop. I got a Photoshop a picture of me. Yo, right. I'm just saying, like, cause you know he had the cornrows and shit. I just he gave me some great advice, and you're like, yo. He gave me a good advice. He was like, yeah, this shit is real. He's like, this is like under. He's like, this is dope, but this is super underground music. And I was like, nah, man. This is what I want to do. And this was like Nelly, Ja Rule era. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, it took me a while, but uh, I, lis I listened to him I eventually. This is crazy. I think that they said. No, the purple one. That blue one. Just, let me see that blue one. Uh, watch, watch this. Watch this shit. Boom. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Shout out so, to the Biggie Duel. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Holding this town. Right, baby, so it was, baby. Like, it was definitely a life experience. Um, when we have Ed OG on the podcast, Ed OG will definitely tell you a funny story about where I used to live. 
<laughs> He'll definitely tell you. He'll be like, yeah, this is where you live. I'm like, he goes, yeah, I'm, I'm only in the car. Just go grab that weed real quick. Yo, <laughs> let me tell you, you're the only dude I know that looks like they could live in the suburbs, they could, who also looks like you could live in a teepee or an igloo. <laughs> That's just like, if you came out of Igloo right now, some shit like you. It's not the hood. You don't see the hood? Yeah, I you mean, the hood. It? Yeah, the hood is there too. Yeah, yeah. Because you did it. You, you know, but I'm just saying that, I don't see how different those, like, I, I, I wouldn't be shocked if someone like you, you're fully dressed like you are, smoking, and we go roll up on this Igloo, and you as you come out. I could definitely come out of an Igloo. I would say, yo, I said, first of all, <laughs> like, the thing is would, about us, the thing about us, Shook, man. Uh, you're the same way. I am me, who no matter who I'm hanging around right, with, right. I'm just going to be me. If I don't want to go in the igloo, mm-hmm. I'm not going to go in the igloo. Mm-hmm. But if I think, oh, it might be cool to smoke an igloo, I'll, I'll, I'll go in the motherfucking igloo. <laughs> I used to call people um, that, that <clears throat> act like who's around them, I would I would call them Arsenio Hall. <laughs> I call them chameleons. Because Arsenio Hall would always try to act like his guest. Yeah, that's that true. show. So I always I did that to people. I'd be, oh, you want some more City Hall shit? Because, <laughs> I mean, he, one minute, remember, he had Mike Tyson them on there trying to act a little, you yeah, know. Yeah. Then the next minute, he has a Louis Farrakhan. Yeah, yeah. No, he's all serious. Brother. But I'm, like, yeah, I'm saying, I, I seen it. So, see, if you look at a lot of rest of them, they don't act like who they have on there, them. Fowler, whoever those dudes are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But our city was, he, <laughs> he was a funny dude. That dude, if you were on this show, you could, you came on there, come on. He had people at their height. Fucking Mike Tyson. It's too that. much work to to, you know, to remember who you gotta act like. Just be yourself, man. That, if people don't fuck with you, they don't fuck with you. That's what I, that's what I'm saying. Some people are, are I'll that. be with the grimiest motherfuckers. I'll make the grimiest motherfucker laugh. Is that so? You know what I'm saying? But so I mean, it's like it's, I'll just be me. I'll say you know some stupid ass shit where sugar be. Why are you saying that's crazy shit? Yeah, because that's the kind of crazy but, shit. But you know what though? <laughs> some people, man, they're more comfortable with that bullshit. Like you know, I mean. I've had people like cause because of you know a career as a rapper and stuff like that and seeing through videos and shit like that. I have people um, think that that's how you actually are. Like even even people behind the music and, and, yeah yeah and and you know just act when I say actual I mean like you're in character like that all the time. Yeah, my shit is real raw and, and, and my music is is pretty much like that straightforward. Your but, music is hard, you know, but. You you mix in the funny you, you mix funny in right so um, I think you're good at that like people I I can see in, in your your music does come off as you right if you know you right you, I, I I don't see really much difference in your music right. than you, so I can see people approaching you thinking that that shit's real and they but can the talk re- you know the reason why I say that is because I have people like say some shit like yeah give me that real like. Like, like they, they, I'm doing a feature. I need to get that real big shook shit, or just like just, you run about like just like knocking motherfuckers out and shit. And be that now, you know that's like the craziest, yeah. Like, like cornball shit ever. Like, but I, but I listen. Then I, you know, I'm gonna intellectually check them. You know what I'm saying? Where they be like, oh, definitely spit like, some funny bars, man. Like but, through but, the years, I'm like, oh man. You know, so I understand the shit. So I, you know. I rolled you say it. something years ago. It was like twenty years ago. I care. Something about a dude riding a bike with no seat. Oh yeah, that's on. <laughs> that's on that? Rec- that's on that record, ain't it? Uh, you know, that master sa- mass oh, assassination. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you type of <laughs> motherfucker who ride a bike with no seat on. Now here's the crazy shit. They had a part. Somebody had something going on out here, or whatever. And and one of uh, I think one of the terms people could have been the big dude. I forget his name. If it was him, but one of them, they was doing that whole verse, and he said, "That's my shit. You done nothing, nothing, nothing with no seat on, right?" They was yelling this shit, right? I'm like, Hector. Nah, nah. Well, Hector would do it too, though. Hector, Hector. <laughs> this dude was the bigger dude. I forget his name. Clip. I think his oh, name clip. was Clip. Oh, Clip. Okay, Clip. Clip. That motherfucker was like, "You got no seat on." Like, he knew the words better than me. <laughs> I was funny. like, "Yo." That, that was a nice little detour we took there. Yeah, um, we'll be taking We them. talked about some cool shit, though. We'll be taking them. You One more thing I had. Uh, you know me, you I'm got? a comedy fan. What else and got? I know you're a Red Sox fan. Yeah. So what do you think about I Bill Burr sold out Fenway Park? He's going to do a show at Fenway Park. You know Bill Burr, right? The comedian yeah. from Boston? Yeah, Burr. Um, that's pretty crazy because you think about it, uh, you know, what, what, how many people sit there? 40,000 people? That's a lot of fucking tickets. And them seats is little as shit. Yeah, they all face the wrong way. Yeah, I can't even fit in there. That shit's fucking ridiculous. Yo, that, that stadium I mean, needs to be torn down. 
uh, I know everyone's like, oh, it's this and that. I was like, listen, they can they can tear Boston Garden down and they can Shit tear Yankee it. Stadium down. Tear they that can they up. can they can tear Fenway Park down and make it Let's more make new comfortable. See, but that's that thing, the, being the last, the stubbornness of Boston, the hierarchy, the yeah. backbone of Boston. Uh, politics or uh, structural shit, ge geographical shit, that geographical shit, that's Boston, man. That's that stubbornness. Because, of course, tear that stupid ass shit. Listen, <laughs> I go see games, man. I be sitting in that little ass chair. This was years ago because I stopped doing it. <laughs> if I would go and I'd go to the luxury box, which I was able to you know, go to some of those, I was cool. But I, all that fucking job, trying to fit in them little ass chairs and shit, man, you know, I don't fucking with that, man. You know? Yeah. Yeah, they need to tear it down. <laughs> tear it down, Red Sox, the whole shit. It like, will, they it, changed Yaki Way, and we all know why. Yeah. You know what oh, I'm saying? Oh, they did change it. Uh -huh. They did change oh, it? Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. What's it been, called now? Oh, uh, not Yaki Way. No sign. Uh -huh. <laughs> Zimbabwe. No, I don't know. They can take Boston Garden down where the Celtics won, like, 13 titles or yeah, something. They can, Selling the pieces of floors for fucking yeah, 50 grand. They can knock that place down. Oh, like, they, they, and I hate to say it because I'm a big show, don't like the Yankees, but if they can knock Yankee Stadium down, one of the most famous fucking buildings in the world, they can knock down Fenway Park, which is one of the most famous buildings and, in the world. And listen, mm -hmm. first time I went to um, Garden, no cap, this is fucking, uh, it was smoky as shit and the people were like this big. Yeah. That's how far, and I was just happy to be there. You know what I'm saying? It was like some team, the Buffalo Braves, dating shit, whatever. Uh, I don't give a fuck. Wow. McAdoo was on the team, Randy Smith. You know what I mean? It was smoky as shit. Like, you know, <laughs> that was the era, even when places were smoky. And you went to the restaurant, now that Airplanes. shit is like, yo, they're fucking smoking over there? They used like, to just put a little wall up, and then just like a, a three foot wall would be right here, and be like, ah, oh, that'll, that'll keep the smoke out. Yeah. <laughs> And no, and it was no issue. You didn't see motherfuckers eating and say you're smoking on over there. And you didn't see people like this. Oh, yeah, it's just so normal. There? No, motherfuckers was eating. Yeah, because you grew up like that. Most people. Yeah. I kind of like it though. You know? I, I, like I, separated. I, yeah. Oh just, yeah. I, I kind of like not smoking in buildings. Me too. You know, now, even now you know. it's cool. I mean, I don't mind. You know. That's why I hear cigarette smoking, cigar smoking, just too much. When, when a lot of people, if one person, if you're hanging out with one guy and he's smoking right, a cigarette, right. it's not a big deal. But if you're in an enclosed place where a hundred people are smoking fucking cigarettes, mm. even mm. weed, mm. even when you're in place at these weed events and there's hundreds of people blazing weed, mm. it, it gets like stuffy. You gotta go outside. You know what I mean? Like, you know what's funny is, just think that was really the way of the world years ago. Right? Yeah. Like right now, me and you probably smoking. Some of you be smoking. Me and our cigarettes out of yeah, me yeah, and you. Fuck, you know yeah. what I mean? We be right here, fucking smoke. And then when something comes, it's smoky. Like shit, it ain't nothing. I was fuck a fan and all that. that. That's part of the life. Yeah. I was a kid going in the, in the kitchen to get a cup of water. And my parents, you know, the shit smoky and shit. Like that shit was nothing. Oh, it's smoky in it. You know, my father blow circles. Oh, them O's. Oh, oh, oh. He my thought, dad smoked too. Thought that shit was cool, man. Our gener My generation was probably the, the, the last was who could pick up cigarettes for our parents uh, like at the corner store I could, I could definitely go to oh, my, my dad my dad sent me here to get what he get like his, man, I did all the time though I mean, but I, now you can't I, do it anymore because now it's like really illegal remember oh, they yeah, did stings yeah. for this shit I remember but that. we used to be able to pick up cigarettes for my our parents my father sent me no listen you could buy, buy them from the machine and pull them out no the question beep, beep. we was on <laughs> some shit where I could go and I could go and get a six pack and um cigarettes from my father and I was 14 13 I was just tall and they, they, you know, it's so funny. My father would send me to this liquor store, Mattapan Square, Mattapan Liquors now, I believe. And he, and he said, go down there and get this, and a pint of this, and cigarettes, right? So I did it once. And and then the dude kept doing it, the owner. And then the, the last time I went to go do it, he said, wait a minute. You're, how old are you? You're, you're not so-and-so, whatever the age was. And I'm saying, this dude knew my father. Like he, yeah, yeah. We all knew this dude. And he said, tell, tell your guy, they call him, he said, tell him I want to talk to him. You know what I mean? And then I was like, then that was it. I couldn't get it no more, but I was getting that shit from Mad Long, son. I'm, that's just that era, man. That was that time. Like, yeah. you know, you could do shit. Now you're right, it's some sting shit. And the sting ain't really on you, the person. The sting is on the establishment. Yeah, exactly. Boom! Like, your shit is fucked now. Now they take, it'd be looking stupid too, because they take all the cigarettes and shit 
or liquor, whatever. Liquor place got to shut down. Cigarette places, you coming in, all the cigarettes is gone out of the place. You're like, what happened to your cigarettes and shit? <laughs> oh, we sold the so and so. I mean, they don't, even, they don't even let you have them in the building. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's crazy shit, man. But you know, it is what it is. Kinda, I'm, you know, it's one of the things that changed that I that I'm kind of I liked the not not stinking like cigarettes everywhere yeah. I went. It's not a smoke cigarette. If I smoke, maybe I would think different now. Nah, I think they still think the same, you know. All right, so Bill Burr, man, uh, that, that was Fenway Park, man. I think that's pretty cool. Burr. Being a home, being from here. Right. You went, you pro- He probably went to that park as a kid a million times. Mm-hmm. Now he's selling it out. That's a lot of tickets, man. Right. Sometimes a sports team that has 20 fucking something people on their team can't sell it out. That's right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and plus it's a big joint. You and know I, what I mean? So. I, I, he'll prob- there'll probably be uh, f- seats on the field, too. So Yeah. You know. I'll be on that field. Not. No, but anyway. I, I, I think he, it's funny. I, I think it's funny. The thing is, is uh, I used to listen to his podcast, like you guys listen to the Danger Zone podcast, right? And um, he would basically work out his material on the podcast, and I didn't know that. And then I went to see him live, mm. and I'm like, oh man, I already heard all these jokes. Mm. So, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. I know some. Re- I know some. Some recycled joke telling motherfuckers, and you know who you are too. You know who I hate? The people mm. who fi- find a quote and, or, or a meme, and then they type it out mm. on their on their like it's, theirs. like it's theirs. They don't put quotes on it or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I fucking hate that shit. I'll see all these memes and all these things, and then I'll see people like re- regurgitate them on Facebook as their own. Right. And it just makes me so mad. And it's like, man, it's like biting a rhyme to me. You're biting rhymes. That's that's what you're doing right there. Even if I didn't credit you, say I did the, yo, you ride a bike with no seat on, and I, and I said that, right? And I didn't credit you? Right. I'd put it in quotation marks. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Because sometimes I don't know where the quote is. I just know it's not my quote. Right, right, so right. So I'll put it in quotes to let people know this isn't me. I, I just I, I like what it, I like what he's saying right here, but I don't know who said this. Mm. So, um, yeah, I don't know. No, that's all good shit. So that was it, com- the comedy um, and, and hip hop. You're out. We're on to uh, sports. Um, we're on to sports. We had a bunch of questions for our guests this week, but we we're gonna reschedule that. Yeah, reschedule. Please go back and watch our interview with Billy Dance of MOP. Mm-hmm. We we just dropped that. It was episode twelve. It's very in depth. It's a forty plus minute interview. Yeah, that is funny, um, insightful. You you know his first rap name. Mm. You know what I'm saying? There's a bunch of cool shit in there. So make sure you guys go check that. Check Hit out that. my man, Billy D, man. Billy Dance. You know what it is, man. Shout out to MOP for his family. And, and keep it moving, you know? So, yeah, let's get into some sports, man. I know that's what you've been waiting for. Well, nah, I mean, that, we got a few. That Celtics win. I know you're a Celtics fan. Yeah, so. of course. I mean, it, it was it was a, a great win. Um, as we speak, now they'll be uh, playing their next game. They're up yeah. on. They're up 1-0 on um, yeah. Brooklyn. Um, Jason Tatum scored at the buzzer to take the win, which is a very hard, hard fought win. But it was, it was, it was great. So you see that photo, the photo of him running. Oh yeah, and celebrating and Kyrie Irving's like, oh, I'm so hungry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, at that point, you know, at that point, man, I mean, the game. They took the game, man. When the game was just an inch from slipping. They took it, you know, so shout out to um, Boston Celtics. Shout out to Marcus Smart uh, being voted uh, Defensive Player of the Year. You know what I'm saying? Uh, lately, it's been going to a big man. Uh, I think it's been quite some time since it was a guard. I think Gary Payton uh, was the last guard <coughs> to win as um, Defensive Player of the Year. So, If I'm wrong, correct me in the chat. Mm-hmm. The last person to win Defensive Player Guard was Michael Jordan in 1988. Uh, I thought it was Peyton. You gotta check it again. I said, yeah, it. Uh, yeah man. but there it was, it was Jordan. I'm, you know, because Peyton won, and that would have been later than that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Definitely later than '88. Yeah, I think Peyton might have won in '90 something. You know, Gary Payton, Defensive Player of the Year. Gary Payton is the first point guard to win to win Defensive Player of the Year award. See, and the only point guard. Oh, maybe Michael Jordan as a shooting yeah. guard. Yeah, because dude, because see things. See, man, I know what I'm talking about, right. man. Yeah, so uh, big show. Bam, 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 bam. This Yo. week's stupid as hell, Mr. Is Google. <laughs> Google, you are stupid as hell. No, I'm saying. Nah, man. So, so I, guess Jordan, I guess Jordan won it as a shooting guard. I guess mm-hmm. that's what, what's going on here. It yeah, says, because smart is smart as a point guard. It says Peyton is the first point guard to win the NBA Defensive Player of the Year award. Was and that 95? Um, I don't know. 
Let me know why you looking for that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm the winner, send somebody the, store to get stuff. He was the first guard in the 39 years of existence until Marcus Smart was uh, uh, selected in like 2022. That, like that, see? I'm telling you, man, I'm inquisitive with this shit, man. You know, I got I got the info. Yeah, 9596. Yeah, see? All I got to do is see that shit, man, and pay attention to it, and boom, this shit's quick. You got the photographic memory? You know what I mean? For real, man. Some people call it pimpographic. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, uh, shit, it is what it is. You know? Hey, shout out to my few people. My man Cornbread of Cali Wild. Shout out to Billy Dance. You know what I'm saying? Wonder Twins Empire. Shout out. You know what I'm saying? Rockwell Artists. Shout out, man. You know? We up here, man. A four. A full accord, our homegirl, shout out. Will, Billy X, shout out. Just a few, man, you know. Wu Family Moving Company. They've been your neighborhood moving company for over 10 years, offering swift, efficient, and stress-free moving. Just call Wu Family Moving at 978-398-2784, online at R-O-U-X-FamilyMoving.com. <laughs> I was just laughing because I remember I was on the train one time and this dude, and I'll never be on the train, but I was this specific time and this dude said, um, man, so uh, did you did you make out with it? I guess they was talking about some girls or whatever. <laughs> Hope so. And, um, and, the, and the dude said, oh, there you go, man. You know, you better, you better be careful. So, uh, so then dude said, what do you mean you didn't? He said, no, she had a big head and she's hideous. <laughs> he said, what he said, wait a minute. She had a big head and she's hideous looking. That shit had me on the fucking floor. I'm like, I'm listening to this conversation where it's like, yo, you didn't you didn't hit, you try to get with her party or nothing because she got a big head and she's hideous looking. <laughs> That's fucking crazy, man. That's crazy. Wherever you at, dude. That usually means you she remember has, when I heard that shit? That usually means she had a fantastic ass. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> he said she was hideous looking. Right, let's think about what the fuck that is, man. That's like hideous. You, she's not even ugly. I'm, I'm glad I've never been that's what described I'm as hideous. That's what I'm I don't saying, think. Man. I don't think I've ever. Don't been make me laugh. At that, that, I mean, <laughs> just take a motherfucker and say, yo, that bitch is ugly as hell or some crazy shit. They said the chick had a big head and she was hideous. Look, wow. Anyway, anyway, what else you got, man? Um, kind of with the Celtics again. I had Kyrie Irving flipping off all the fans. Oh yeah, I Boston got Garden. some. Yeah, he's in that segment, so I yeah yeah. Oh okay, I got you. We'll, we'll save him. All right. So what about this? What about this uh, guy who was they're saying who lost games on purpose? I believe that's Hugh Jackson who was coaching um, the Cleveland Browns. Oh and, okay. Uh, he got fired, and um, he didn't say anything previously when he got fired. fired. But he was said he was paid extra to you know not necessarily uh, lose games, but to, to make sure they didn't win them. <laughs> yeah, it's just so, right here that the Cleveland Browns say they welcome investigation by the NFL yeah. into this tanking thing. Yeah, so that's what they're saying now after this was said. So cor correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. The Cleveland Browns are only like a ten-year-old organization, right? No, Cleveland because no, nah, no, nah, because the Cleveland Browns became the Baltimore Ravens. Okay. And then, and then the oh, people of revisit. And yeah. then, and then the people of Cleveland made such an uproar that they put a new team there. Right, is right. that true? That's true, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I always so. thought that. Yeah, yeah. But the Cleveland Browns, you know, that's why you still have that name. Yeah. Yeah. And the history, you know what I mean? So, well, maybe not ten years, but twenty years or whatever. Whenever the uh, Orioles came in, came into place. Yeah, fuck Who did the Houston Oilers become? The Tex no, Titans. 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 Yeah, yeah. So I told you, all I got to do is see shit. <laughs> I know shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All call, right. They call me Chris Ball. Boom. You know All right. Well, that's that. So I think it's time for that time of the week where we talk about someone who's stupid. Stupid as hell. Boom. You, you mean someone that stupid? Oh yeah. Here we go, Yo, ladies and gentlemen. This week's stupid as hell is Kyrie Irving. Now the part that that kind of got me, man, fucked up is. Like, I think this dude is a tremendous basketball player. Man, he's even probably, he could be even a, a good um, uh, human being. I, you know, I don't really know him like that. But when your narrative is that the Celtics are, um, you know, racist and all that, like, like they try to say, like, from back in the day, um, because and you want to use that because that's weakness. And... You want to throw up like the bird and middle fingers and shit because they all get talking shit to you. 
Listen, people ain't people ain't sympathetic to people who make a hundred million dollars a year or fifty million, whatever it is. Like that's number one. And those are only words. It's the sticks and stones might break my bones, but names have never hurt me. That's a really old ass adage, but that's really what that is. It's like, what the fuck? It's like, it's like you are weak and make a stupid decision like that, and now you have to pay fifty thousand to the NBA, which might be nothing to you, but it's like, imagine that. Could have went to some kid yeah. that, you, that you say you care about. Or it's some just, organization. You know and like I said, you're young enough to, man, make a, um, you're young enough, man, to, to get your shit right or whatever, man. I, I don't worry about that. But on this case right now, <laughs> you stupid as hell, man, for real. You know, come on, man. <laughs> you know, play ball. And plus, you're the one that said, remember when you were here, you said, I'll take. I'll come back if y'all have me. Come on, man. You sound. You know that shit was dumb as shit. Then you took <laughs> off. Said it just like that, man. Like the gotch. I seen this shit. You was like, yo, I'll I'll be here if you have me. And then you turn. That's why they gonna scream on you, man. That's how it's gonna be. You know, toughen up, man. But this week, on that note, you stupid as hell. You know what it is, poof. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, man. What else you got cracking over there, Jake? Folks. Um, <laughs> Call him Mr. DL. Um, <laughs> every time you say my name, you gotta say pause. Nah, nah, because cause, I mean, that name is that name, DL. DL. It's just, yo, yo, what's that stand for? Yo, Dick Long. <laughs> yeah, like what? Yeah, so, yeah, my name is Richard Long. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. You know, you make it. You know, he says David Latch, but I say Richard Long. What's your name? Nah, but it's all good, man. You know, you fuck around a little bit. Man, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what I'm saying it is what it is, man. Oh, she do snorkel and uh, shit, shit. all that. I don't know. I kind of wanted to throw in a classic story on this one, but I think yeah. we might have a good episode. I don't know. I kind of want to hear your your bear story from when you were camping. <laughs> you told me. Oh, 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 hold on. Is, is it the one? <laughs> because it's about to be that camping season, and I think oh. people need to like. I think. They, nah, I'm just saying. Need to, like, you're talking about the one when when I was um, on the grill. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, no, no question. <laughs> because, that, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching the Danger Zone podcast. Danger Zone podcast. Sometimes we have 13. stories about Tupac. Sometimes we have stories about Brad Pitt. Sometimes we got stories about bears. Bears. So here we go. Yo, but peep though, some real <laughs> shit, you know. Um, so I go with the family up in the mountains and shit, man. You know, Attach Mountains, man. Shout out Conway. And um, I'm always the one doing the cooking on the grill and shit like that. So. I was cooking on the grill. I, I took the food out. It's dark as a motherfucker. It's black as shit. You can't see nothing. It's, it's super black. And I'm cooking on the grill. And then all of a sudden, man, here comes a bear. Now, the bear's walking. Like, that's normal around there, man. But this bear's big as shit. This mm. bear, this bear's like, man, mad big black bear. The three Bs, <laughs> big black bear. He was big as shit. So he walks near, the, I'm in the gazebo, man, fuck, it's raining a little, I think. And so I'm in the gazebo uh, on the grill, you know what I'm saying? And the bear walks up and, you know, he's walking by, then he just stops. And he looks at me, and I, then looks back, and then just keeps walking, right? And I don't, you know, I don't flinch, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm chilling, man, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm making the stakes, whatever. But then I'm thinking, like, this bear probably was like, yo, I'm black, <laughs> you're black. We good out here, man. We outside. Yo, <laughs> yo, outside. I'm like, yo, it's funny, man, but it's real, though, man. You know what I'm saying? It's real. It's real on here in the Danger Zone podcast. Right. Hey, episode 13, me and your man, you know what I'm saying? SS. SS? Shaft Surfer. Oh. Nah, but <laughs> we got to cool down with the SS, though. Said, yo, <laughs> SS, SS, I know, right? I was, as you say, do his ass ass. That's what wow, man. <laughs> nah, that's all good, man. Yeah, you know, surfer. <laughs> that's too funny. I mean, did you make that up? Yeah, of course. You, you made know, that slang up? You know, I don't be using no shit. Remember, oh. excuses have no purpose, so don't make them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it is what it is. 
<laughs> we out of here. The Danger Zone Podcast, man. All right, peace. Peace, man. Got All my you. dark days, I chopped crack on a regular. Ran up in spots and clapped on a regular. Took big fat ass stacks from the register. No matter how hard they tried, they still couldn't measure up. Hard I had.